What is going on, beautiful people? Welcome to another episode of The Narcissist Code. I'm your favorite self-aware narcissist, Mr. Lee Hammock, better known as Mental Illness across all social media platforms. If this is your first time seeing my face or hearing my voice, I'm a diagnosed narcissist and I use my platform on social media to raise awareness for NPD, get more people into therapy, and also validate the victims, survivors, and the thrivers of said disorder. So y'all, y'all see me shaking and moving? I gotta get the moving, I gotta move my body a little bit, y'all. Um, so, first of all, if y'all watching, this, if you listen to this on Apple Music or Spotify, hit that five stars for me, y'all. Hit that five star rating for me. You know what I mean? I haven't asked for that in a long time. I appreciate so far who've done it so far. I'm super thankful. Whatever you listen to this on Apple, Spotify, Amazon, whatever you listen to this on, hit that five stars for me, y'all. Also, Austin, Texas, October 15th, we'll be out there. Today's episode, y'all, is going to be about inner child, narcissist inner child, personal story about my own personal inner child, y'all. So, Y'all know I've been in psychotherapy for the last, uh, it's been five years. It's been five years of therapy. Next month, October, will be five years. And I have a therapy appointment, uh, not on my anniversary date for five years of therapy, but it's getting close there. So it's kind of wild I've been in therapy for five years. But right now, y'all, what we're doing in therapy is working on inner child work, y'all. Inner child work is very, very tough because you know a lot of people, a lot of narcissists, a lot of people who've been diagnosed with narcissism, narcissism or NPD or whatever, any kind of personality disorder, have experienced some type of childhood trauma where their inner child has been damaged or whatever. So this is my perspective on you know narcissistic personality disorder and inner in the inner child. I personally think, and just talking to my therapist as well, the last five years, that narcissistic personality disorder is really defense. Is really in defense. Like my personality uh, at a certain age due to some type of trauma, mental, physical, whatever, fractured. And the inner child part was developed, was, you know, was shielded and developed this narcissistic protective shield of me. You know what I mean? So this protective shield has grown as I have grown. My inner child is still an inner child, but the protective shield has grown into, a, you know, this massive adult mindset, like where I'm at right now. So my inner child is still there. I have moments of clarity and peace and things like that that I, you know, I experience while meditating, while I experience while I'm in therapy and stuff like that, where, where it feels like my inner child has been set free, but almost instantaneously the narcissistic part takes over and, and buries the inner child. It kind of, it doesn't bury it, it steps in front of it to protect it. Like we've been hurt before. No, no, no inner child Lee. We've been hurt before, so I need to protect you from the world. I need to protect you from everything else out here. We've tried this before. We've tried being vulnerable. We've tried exposing ourselves to the world, and we were hurt mentally or whatever. We had some mental damage. We're not going to let that happen again. So the narcissistic part kicks in, takes over, and the clarity and peace is gone. Like the other day in therapy, I was looking at my, I had a moment of clarity and peace. I was just admiring literally just the designs on my hand, y'all. Look at, look at, you know, the patterns on your hands. I was just admiring it because it felt like I was awake. It felt like I was awake and I was free for a little bit, right? I could see the hairs in my hand. It, it was like a good experience. Like my inner child was enjoying, enjoying the world for a second. But then, like I could feel like my hand started squeezing my hand, and then it's like I had a physical reaction. And then I, the, I, I came to. It's a wild mindset being a narcissistic person, y'all. Like my person, my mind has literally developed this personality disorder, this personality complex, this super ego, whatever y'all want to call it, the Jezebel spirit, whatever y'all want to call it. It has developed this to protect me. It's kind of wild, y'all, because I tell I tell this to people all the time. Like I feel like I woke up when I was like eight years old, right? I feel like I was born at eight years old. Like I don't have any memories before I was eight years old. But so this is the thing right here, y'all. I don't have any memories before I was eight years old. I remember waking up around my eighth birthday, just like in the middle, 607 East Moorhead Street in Reedsville, in the middle, like in the hallway, in the middle of a furnace. Now, it was kind of like I opened my eyes and I was awake. I was like, huh? But I, I had all, I knew who my family members were. I knew who my friends were. I knew who my brother was. I knew my mom. I knew everybody. I knew my, I knew my life, but I couldn't remember anything before that. You know, I knew who these people were. I knew what I was doing in life, but I had no idea what was going on. It's kind of like I woke up, you know? And my therapist is like, something happened around that time right there where your personality fractured and you developed the narcissistic side that kicks in that has protected you and shielded you for a very, very long time. So deep down inside, I might still be eight, nine years old or something like that. You know what I mean? But this narcissistic part, part the, the shielded part of me has just grown around it. It's kind of like, what is it like? An apple, let's just say, the easiest description, right? I'll come up with a better analogy because y'all know I come up with fire analogies. The best analogy for me to describe it is that like a seed, right? The apple core. 
you know, the apple, how the apple grows around the seed. Like you eat, the, you eat around the apple and then the, the small seeds are inside. That's my inner child. The narcissism is the shell, is the meat and all the other stuff. My inner child, the narcissism has developed to protect me and to shield me. That's why you, you see a lot of narcissistic people. They're, we're emotionally stunted, which is emotionally immature. You know, we give emotionally immature responses. Rage, silent treatment, stuff like that. Not just stonewalling you, things like that. Those are childish responses, y'all, because deep down internally, we are still like emotionally immature. We're physically grown. We physically look out like a, look like adults and whatever. I'm 37 years old, but I've had the emo emotional maturity probably of a young child sometimes. Y'all, I understand the dynamic now. Am I proud of it? No. Am I proud of how, or how far I've come? Yes. You know what I mean? But. We did, like I said, I've done a video on this before. I'll, I'll just kind of do a refresher. We've done this, like, my therapist, like, yeah, what are your, what are your, like, your memories? Like, what can you remember around your eighth birthday? I, like, I remember, like, going outside on my birthday or whatever, and we was riding bikes or whatever around the house. Know, it might not have been my birthday. It was a date. We were riding bikes around my house. Me, my twin brother, my uh, my older cousin, Marcus, and my cousin, Donnie. We was riding our bikes around the house. This uh, 607 East Moorhead Street in Reedsville. We was riding bikes around the house right there, y'all. And that's all I can see. I remember what you know. I remember the, the fence. I remember Mr. Fred's fence and whatever. I remember all this stuff, right? I remember there's a lot of stuff going on over there. I was like, yeah, there's a lot of stuff over here. You know what I mean? But then my therapist was like, zoom, zoom out of your memory. So I was closing my eyes, walking her through this memory. She's like, zoom out of it. I like zoom out. What are you talking about? She's like, zoom out. Tell me what you see now. So I just kind of like. I feel like my mind was like a um, like a video camera, right? So I like literally zoomed out. <laughs> I zoomed out of my memory, and all, all of a sudden I could see more. I can see a little bit more now, right? So I'm eight, nine years old. I'm happy riding a bike or whatever. But in the very bottom left-hand corner of my memory, y'all, guess what, guess what was in the bottom left-hand corner of my memory, of my eight-year-old memory? Me. The adult version you see right now, me. I was standing there in my own memory, my old childhood memory. I'm standing there. She's like, she's like what do you, she, my therapist can see that I'm having a physical reaction. She's like, what do you see now? I'm like, I see me. She's like, you, what do you mean you? I was like, there's an adult version of me in my early, my earliest childhood memory now that I zoomed out of it. She's like, get close, she's like, get closer to you. Zoom in on the, old, the adult version of you. And the closer the quote unquote, mem my mind camera got to my adult version of me, the more physical reaction that I started to have in real life. Like I was getting physically angry. It was like, it was kind of like my, my the adult version, the manifestation of me was standing in front of a door of my emotional or my or my childhood memories, and it would not let me get closer to it. The closer I got to it, the angrier I became. So the net right there is, and, and I had to, we had to stop the therapy woman because was, I was like literally having chill bumps and getting really getting really really mad in real life. Um, so we had to stop the appointment right there. So she told me she was like, I think that door right there, the door to your emo your the, the emotional blockage you feel like you have. A lot of narcissistic people have that door is right there, but you see who's in front of that door. You, your childhood self has been your childhood memories. The good memory you have has been locked outside of us. You remember that good memory, but the bad stuff that happened, whatever happened, is behind that door. Your emotional vulnerability, your emotional maturity is behind that door. And your the narcissistic part of you, who you are right now, who you are sitting in front of me, the narcissistic person I did sort of part of you is guarding it with his life. She's like, and it is like you, it's, it's, it's why they call it the superego. It's like it, little, a little, little eight year old version of me, gonna, eight year old version of me is gonna fight 20, 37 year old version of me. That is, that's, that's not a battle you wanna have right there. So the closer I get to my own emotional vulnerability, the closer somebody else gets to that door, the angrier and the more I tend to push them back. So that's why you see a lot of narcissistic people possibly being emotionally un not vulnerable and pushing people away. The closer you get to them, the further they push you away because they don't want to let you near that door. That door of emotional vulnerability, that of shame and stuff like that behind that door, of feeling free, or whatever, they're so, they don't want to let you in there because who knows what happens when you get in there. I feel like sooner or later, I know people are going to ask now, are you, do you think you ever get past that door? Like, who knows? Do I want to get into that door? I'm kind of scared to get into the door. Like, what happened? What's going on in my mind? Do you know what I mean? It's scary. But it's scary, but it's also enlightening. You know what I mean? It's enlightening to just, just understand the dynamics of what made me who I am. You know, my therapist, like, you, you know, I started kind of crying a little bit. This is my last therapy session last Friday. She was just like, yeah, you are, you know, you or you, I think we might be getting close to a breakthrough or whatever, but she's like, you are, you know, your super ego is like incredibly, just incredibly strong. It's like you, you just, it, you know, a lot of narcissistic toxic people develop these super egos to protect their wounded, wounded inner child. 
You see it. You see it. That's why you, if you ever ever experienced narcissistic rage, passive aggressive, covert narcissistic, you know, silent treatment, whatever, you know, if you ever experienced that, that's when you get close to that vulnerability. When you, when that, when you, you know, when that shame is knocking at the door trying to get out, the narcissist is trying to avoid that shame, y'all. We don't want to avoid the shame. The little inner child us is still there. You know, it's still there. Wanting, wanting to get out, wanting to experience the world. So you, sometimes you'll see you'll see moments of clarity and peace coming from that narcissistic person. When they'll be open and vulnerable to you. And sometimes, typically, that will, might happen when they, if you have a narcissistic person that drinks, not an alcoholic narcissist, but somebody that drinks casually or whatever. They take a shot or two. You'll see the guard kind of come down. Sometimes they'll become emotionally vulnerable and start saying nice stuff to you, and being sweet to you. I talk to people who just said that they, they like that narcissist. They, they the narcissistic person they deal with is a happy, tipsy drunk, not a happy drunk. But a happy tipsy drunk, like they're just more emotionally vulnerable. They're there. It's just like it's like the person they fell in love with initially. And I told you when I'm, when a narcissist is love bombing you, y'all, it's them trying to they they trying they're trying to be there, but it's just, they just can't get there, y'all. And then once they feel like you're getting too close, you're getting too close to that doorway of their emotions and their vulnerability, that their, their super ego kicks in, starts to devalue you, and pushes you away. You know what I mean? My inner child is still there. It's still I, I I still feel it. I have moments of clarity and peace. So I could just like it's like a kind of like boyhood, you know, childhood wonderment. Like you just see the world, just like wow, the world is a very beautiful place. Like you start to see the trees clearer and the world clearer overall and things like that. And you get to that point where you see all this stuff happening. You're like, damn, this is, the world is a beautiful place. But then all of a sudden, snap, you snap out of it. You know, like snap into a damn slim gym and it messes your brain up and it's just like you back, you I'm back here. And that can cause a lot of people to be depressed because you have these moments of clarity and you want to get back to that moment. You want to get back to that clarity. You want to get back to that little peaceful feeling. But sometimes the only way you can get there is by drinking. But, you know, if you drink consistently, you, it takes longer to get there. It takes more to get there. So you, you, you have a lot of people who struggle with alcoholism that, deal with, that are also narcissists. Or a lot of people who struggle with alcoholism or drug abuse and things like that because they're trying to get to that clarity and peace. Because that was, like, that was mental calmness, y'all. That was stillness. That moment of clarity and peace I had in therapy, and I was just like looking, you know, looking at my hands and stuff like that, and just realizing it. And I was just, I like, I told my therapist, I love moments like this. She's like, what, what moment is that? I like, I like this clarity and this peace. I like this mental stillness, a mental illness, though. You see the play on words. Like, I like this mental stillness, you know. And then it, it was gone. It's fleeting. Those moments of clarity and peace are fleeting moments. The inner child wants to come out, y'all, but something is guarding it. And I know I didn't do this video over here for y'all for y'all to go here and try to heal some narcissistic people's wounded inner child or whatever. You know what I mean? I'm not telling you to do that because you don't have the possibility of doing it. My therapist can't do it for me. They have to do it for themselves. You know what I mean? You can tell them that the door exists and they still have to choose to try to get closer to that door. It's tough as hell, y'all. This is not me trying to tell you to stay in a toxic relationship, hold out any longer. No, 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 no. If it's time for you to go, it's time for you to go. Do not use this video as, as you know, as a, if a narcissist person just happens to see this video. If you stumble upon this video, you're a narcissist, go to therapy. Go get help. You know what I mean? Uh, hopefully your significant other didn't send you this video because, and you use this to manipulate them because if you are, if you do do that, you're an evil bastard. You know what I mean? Don't do that. You know what I mean? Well, Lee Hammond called narcissist evil man. I didn't say all narcissists are evil. I don't think all narcissists are evil. All, most narcissistic people are just damaged people, y'all. It is, it is what it is. You know? The inner child is there. It's just guarded. It's this apple seed. You know, the apple has grown around the seed or whatever. You know, I'm going to think of a better analogy for that. I would just put myself on the spot. Y'all know how I do these videos. I write down one. I wrote down two words and I got a 14 minute video out of it. Literally. It says inner, the, the, the dash says inner child. <laughs> That's all it says on my paper, inner child. And I just told y'all 14 minute video. The 14 minute video of my inner child work and stuff like that. Meanwhile, y'all. Like and share this video, y'all, because these videos I typically do about my own narcissistic journey, whatever. They they rarely ever do well. That's why I don't do a lot of it. Like, why don't you tell more about the narcissists? Because I don't care about them. Nobody watches them. I got two hundred thirty-eight thousand people that follow me on YouTube. But I have a video like this that have four hundred views because people just scroll past. They're like, oh, I don't care about that. Tell me how to get. My, tell me how to. Tell me if they love me. Tell me if they care about me. <laughs> you know what I mean? I understand it. You know, I get it. Meanwhile, if y'all made it this far, I'm truly thankful for y'all. Uh, little. Little inner child mental illness is thankful for y'all as well. <laughs> Get back in there. I'm just joking. Anyway, y'all, stay safe, stay empowered. Like and subscribe for more. And as always, mental illness is up. Peace.